All right, cool. So we're going to talk about testicular ultrasound. In that wonderful world. So um, totally stolen from Dr. D. Coney Berry, but uh, she talks about how the testicle is like a, um, I don't know if you guys cannot see my, sorry, there it goes. Testicle is basically like a mohawk, right? So the head is the testicle itself and then running along the top of it, right, is your epididymis. And then it kind of comes down into a tail and imagine he had like a long tail and then it would come up into the spermatic cord up here. So just kind of keeping in mind, the way that you do testicular ultrasound, again, stolen from Dr. D. Coneyberry, is uh, you're going to set the patient up and you're gonna have them flip their PP up on top and put a blanket across to keep them covered. And then on the bottom, what you're gonna do is you're gonna give them like a towel to prop up the testicle. So this way you have a, a space for the testicular, for the ultrasound to kind of come down and get like on the bottom here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with one and you're gonna kind of scan up and down. So in your transverse, you're gonna rotate and then scan across and long axis. And then you can do that on both sides. So left and right, so you can kind of compare. And then your last view is what we call the buddy view. And this is the one where you're just scanning in transverse up both testicles, really to get a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And so normal testicular size is going to be four centimeters by three by 2.5. And the texture should look kind of similar to what the thyroid looks like or your liver. So kind of uniform echo texture. Um, sometimes you're going to have this little, uh, like, I'm trying to get the right word um rift in there and that's totally normal uh typically on the uh periphery you're going to see the epididymis and then here you're going to see more epididymis so now we're just kind of scanning through the epididymis that's on the bottom and then as you start to come up more proximal right here you're getting up and towards the spermatic cord area and then more of the spermatic cord up here so this is kind of all normal. Then what you always want to do is throw color flow on it because obviously you're looking for testicular flow. So sorry. Um, one of the so what you want to do when you put your color box in, right? You want to put it so that it takes up the entire testicle. One of the drawbacks of doing this though is that the bigger the box is, the lower the frame rate from the machine, right? Because it's trying to take in so much information at once. Um, it's going to make it harder to detect higher velocity flows. And so you want to make sure that you're adjusting the settings so that you can have, um, you can detect the slowest flow possible. So you always want to make sure that you start on the side that doesn't hurt them. And you're going to do all your gain settings. So for color, sorry, color gain settings to the unaffected side so that you have what their normal looks like. Um, things you want to adjust is your PFR, which is the pulse repetition frequency. Um, this one is like three to negative three. Usually it's gonna be about one to two or somewhere in that range. Uh, you can drop this lower if you need to, if you're not picking up any flow at the three. So it's three centimeters per second. That's the slow rate it's trying to pick up. Um, and then on the gain box, when you're on the color, you can adjust the gain on the color so that you can um, bring it up or bring it down based on what you're seeing. Um, the other option you can do is color power Doppler. So now it's not giving you directionality of flow, but just giving you flow in general. So this is a little bit more sensitive, but doesn't tell us like artery versus vein kind of thing. Um, one of the other things, and we're going to touch base a lot about this when we talk about torsion is looking at the spectral Doppler flow of artery versus vein. And one of the uh, important things in the boards really like this question is the resistive index. So what your resistive index is, it's essentially the peak. So this is obviously the arterial flow. So it's the peak um, speed of the flow divided by the um, trough. So essentially it's peak minus trough divided by peak and it's gonna give you a uh, resistive index. A normal testicular flow, right? This should never touch the base. 
never touch your baseline. You should always have continuous flow through the testicle. The higher the difference between these two numbers, right, the higher the resistive index. And it'll become important when we talk about torsion versus um, the hyperemia you get of detorsion and figuring that out compared to like a orchitis. That's where resistive index becomes really important. And then vein, obviously, you can just see it's continuous out draining outflow. And then again, you always want to put the buddy view, and then you're going to put both color the color box across both testicles again, so you can compare color flow yeah. left to color flow to right. Any questions on like that's kind of the how to? It's pretty pretty easy. So scan one long axis, short axis, color flow. Scan the other one, same thing, and then buddy view with both on color flow, and then. Again, the most important thing is just color box or your set your gain to the unaffected testicle because that's what you're going to use as your baseline to see if the affected testicle has any issues with the flow. All right, some pathologies. Um, so you can see uh, sometimes stones you're going to get within the testicle itself and it's going to cause that simple shadowing artifact. So that's a scrotal lip. So for this one, you can see that there's flow here, right? But when we compare it to this side, there's no flow. This is an example of torsion. So other things we look for for torsion, I'm gonna jump back for a second. Oh, um, most common on the left side. So most torsions happen on left. And then power Doppler alone shouldn't assure you that you have you do not have torsion um you just because you have arterial flow does not rule out torsion typically the first thing that's going to go is actually the venous flow so that's really important that you're looking for both the arterial and the venous waveforms and not just the arterial waveforms all right so other things we look for when it comes to torsion so the first thing you're going to notice which testicle looks bigger yeah, the left one, right? So if you think about torsion, just because the flow can't get in and the flow can't get out. So the flow not getting out is essentially going to make the testicle swell. So your torus testi is going to be larger. The other thing, if you start to notice, look at the echo texture, right? So this is our normal side, unaffected, right? It kind of looks homogenous. And then if you come here, you're starting to see it's like a little bit darker in these areas. Right, we're having a little bit of like edema within the testicle, and you're starting to see some changes. Uh, the other thing you notice is look at the lie, right? One is kind of up down, and then the affected one is side to side. So you got a bigger size, you have a different lie, and you have an echo texture. You don't really see it in this picture, but you also often get a reactive hydrocele. So those are some clues. Um, the size and echogenicity changes can take up to six hours to develop. So you may not see that initially, but the lie will be different. Um, and then here's an example, you can see that reactive hydrocele. Okay, so you see the, the little bit of fluid there. And then again, they've got color flow, you got good flow here, and then there's nothing here. Uh, typically you will lose complete arterial flow at 450 degrees of torsion. So anything less than that, you're going to get partial. So you still may get flow, but it'll be less than the unaffected side. So again, that's why presence of flow doesn't rule out torsion. Uh, and, and then this is actually a really nice example. So if you look, right, this testicle is bigger. It's got a different lie. You see changes in the echo texture of it, but there's flow. So don't be fooled by flow on the outside or the periphery. Of it right there's no internal flow and that's really where you need to look at so again blood flow on the edge of the testy is not reassuring and does not rule out torsion just like arterial flow alone does not rule out torsion uh, when you have testicular torsion so remember the normal resistive index was like 0.5 to 0.7 so when you get torsion now that that uh, inflow to systole to diastole becomes greater and that resistive index number goes higher. So zero points higher than 0 0.7. <laughs> Other things you're gonna see is um, a reversal of flow during diastole. That's also gonna suggest torsion. So you can see 
here there's a, a dip, a reverse of flow. Um, sometimes the only finding of torsion, again, because if you have a partial torsion, you're still going to get arterial flow, but you're going to lose your venous waveforms. So you're going to have to start to sample different areas looking for that venous waveform. So if you can't find it, then that's going to be an early sign of torsion. Um, other things you can look for is what's called the whirlpool sign, which essentially you get this twisting of this spermatic cord. And when you put color flow on it, it looks like a whirlpool. Um, this, uh, it's like a tart donut with like concentric rings around it, or they call it a snail shell or a storm on a weather map. Um, all of these can be also helpful to help diagnose testicular torsion, but can easily be mistaken for epididymitis as well, because you're gonna see increased flow within the epididymis. So you have to be really careful to make sure that you're looking for the that swirling. All right, cool. So this one, um, we've actually had a couple of cases for us in the ED here of uh, using ultrasound to guide your testicular detorsion. So you've confirmed it on the bedside, right? This was a, a case we wrote up. This was a uh, actually 14 year old gentleman that came in and on uh, ultrasound, right, a testicle was larger, a different lie, didn't quite so much have the echo texture changes yet, but again, good flow here, nothing here. And so we did a 360 degree turn and he had, he had some flow, right? There was definitely more, his pain was actually improved, but this is a really nice example of how when you're detorsing somebody, you can get a partial detorsion and they're still not completely resolved. So his pain wasn't gone, but it was like significantly improved. And uh, we were doing it actually with the ultrasound tech and the, the tech was like, yeah, it's not quite the hyperemia I would expect after a detorsion. So let's try one more turn. And so we actually did one more. And then this was the post hyperemia that we saw. And this is very normal. So this was, uh, and then when we did this one, he actually had complete resolution of pain. And so that told us that we had successfully detoured him. So he had a couple more turns than we had expected. Um, okay, cool. Moving on. So the next one is going to be epididymitis. And so normal epididymis is going to be small. And you're going to have, you know, potentially a little bit of fluid around it. When you have epididymitis, you're going to start to see it's going to get enlarged. It's going to start to look edematous, right? It just kind of looks big and bulky. You're going to see a bit more fluid, so reactive hydrocele around it. And then when you put color flow on it, uh, you're going to get hyperemia. So again, the problem is that when you have hyperemia with epididymitis or orchitis, how do you tell the difference between that and the hyperemia of detorsion, right? Because patients sometimes will spontaneously tors and detours, and so you don't know which one you're dealing with. So this is where your resistive index becomes really important. So normal for testes is 0.5 to 0.7. Torsion is higher, so it's greater than 0.7. Whereas epididymitis, the torsion is going to, the RI, sorry, is going to be lower, right? Because this is an increased flow, whereas torsion is a decreased flow problem. Um, the other thing you can look at is your, um, oh, why am I breaking on the, the speed of the, flow into the testicle, right? If it's greater than 15 centimeters per second, that's also gonna be suggestive epididymitis because it's gonna have increased velocity flows, right? Cause it's more hyperemia. So those are some signs for epididymitis. All right, what do we think we have here? Yeah, exactly. What made you think abscess? No flow within it. It's hard to tell. A little posterior testicle. No. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, no blood flow within the actual like hypoechoic area. Yep. And then in here, right, you see there's kind of mixed exogen echogenicity yeah. changes as well. All right. So what do we have here? So what's this thing? So yeah, good. So we've got hyperemia. So this one is, what structure is this one? The testicle. Yeah. 
Yep. So this is your epididymal work, I guess. Right. And this can look very similar to that hyperemia detorsion that we saw. So that's where your resistive index would be very helpful. The other thing is that hyperemia from detorsion only lasts about 15, 20 minutes. So if you're not sure, you can go back like three minutes later, like 30 minutes later and rescan them. And if that hyperemia is gone, they were torsing, they were detorsing themselves. If it's persistent, it's probably orchitis epididymitis hyperkinia. Cool. Um, this one is the unaffected side. This is the affected side. So again, color power Doppler. So not giving me directionality of flow, but just flow in general. And then we can see this side is much more hyperemic. And so now we're looking at orchitis. Orchitis is a bit rarer than epididymitis. Um, okay, so hyperemia and pain, right? That's gonna be your orchitis. And then low resistive index, high speed. Whereas with torsion, you're gonna have hyperemia and they're gonna have loss of pain, right? So not gonna have any pain because now they've got flow back. Resistive index is gonna be high and then they're gonna have a much decreased flow, right? Because it's a inflow problem. Any questions on that? Okay. Cool. Yes, we use what? So, how do you measure it now? Or is oh, that it's the, you know what to do with the spectral Doppler and you just take the velocity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain is, yes, there you go. Yep, that's it. I was like, my brain is uh, escaping now what it is. Okay. So again, low resistive index, high speed, Orchitis. I think I have beaten this at horse, right? Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do we have here? Oh, just kidding. It's right there. <laughs> Hydrazeal. Yay. I like giving the answer. So things you look for, right? Posterior acoustic enhancement. Um, you're going to see the fluid collection between the two layers of the tunica vaginalis, and then most common reported cause of painless scrotal swelling. So compare this one to what this one is. So what do we think is going on here? Mm. So it's a pio seal. Mm. So basically it's just a, a loculated, yeah. So uh, complications from untreated epididymo orchitis or a rupture of an abscess, an uh, intratesticular abscess. Um, usually you're gonna see lots of septations within that hydrocele. <laughs> and then here's another example. We're starting to get some loculations within, that's probably if didn't miss there, but you can see there's like a little bit of a loculation there. All right, again, stolen from ASEPS ultrasound review course. Um, other things we can look for, right, is scrotal cellulitis. So just like everything in regular cellulitis kind of applies to the scrotum as well. So you get thickening, you get a uh, loss of architecture. Um, sometimes you'll get some fluid tracking as well in couple stoning. And then one of the nice applications of this one, and this case is so severe, it's probably hard to figure out what it is, um, but this is in the testes. Yeah. The air. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, this is all air. This is all air. Yeah. This patient had a crazy four years. And so this was their CAT scan, right? It was all air. It was insane. Um, so again, more examples of here's some air within there. So a lot of times it can be a lot more subtle than that. All right, what about this one? This one's a little bit. It's like the testicle is larger. Mm -hmm. left. Yeah. Um, with the left. Over the ankle, like a sternum posterior. Like, yeah. Like the tissue there just doesn't look, I guess, like loss of architecture. It was like hypochoic areas. Yeah, what would you want to, what would you want to do? on the machine to figure out, help figure out what this is. But you're right, yes, there's something bizarro back here. Oh, the color. Uh, yeah, yep. Yep, these are varicose seals. Varicose seals are very common on the left side. 
So again, put color flow on, they call it like a bag of worms. Um, left side is very common, and it's because of the way the gonadal vein drains into the renal vein. It's like a 90 degree turn. Um, a right-sided varicocele should be concerning though. <clears throat> so that's one of the things that the board's like also asking, because um, it can be a sign of a neoplasm, because you should not have them on the right side. Um, in men over age 40, you can start thinking about things like uh, renal malignancy, because then it's uh, eating into the renal vein and basically obstructing the flow. Um, you can also see varicoceles and nutcracker syndrome. That's another presentation of it. What do we have here? It has all the answers on there, but what is it? This is in the setting of trauma. Yeah, exactly. Testicular rupture. Yep. So kind of even just like eyeball rupture, right? Globe rupture. You're going to get a regular shape. You're going to see um, some complex hydroceles uh, with different densities because of the hematoceal. So some you could have some layering. <laughs> because of the rupture, you've lost the um, homogeneous echogenicity of it. And then if you put color flow on it, you'll see areas that are um, basically avascular. So more examples, this whole area is just completely avascular from the, the rupture. What's this one? Just, yep. Just. This one's a little bit harder. Um, this is your epididymoid cyst. Um, so basically it gives you this like onion ring looking thing. So a well circumscribed lesion with different layers within it with uh, alternating hyper and hypoechoic rings. What's this one? So what does it look like? The cyst, yeah. Where is it? Yeah, epididymal cyst. Nice. All right, what do we have here? Have you guys ever, have you ever encountered these yet? Micro, ah, yes. <laughs> yep, there you go. Arcolithiasis. So just small testicular calcifications. Um, causes non-shadowing echogenic, echogenic foci within the testicles. Um, basically, it's like hydroxyapatite concentrations within the lumens of the seminiferous tubercles. It used to be thought to confer a higher risk of testicular cancer and needed screening testicular ultrasounds. Um, now the data is a little more controversial. All right. So this one is what we call a striated testicle and can actually be a normal variant. So you just see these like little lines in there um, can be confused with like malignancy. So if you come across it in sort of the pocus realm, I would always refer them out to like an official ultrasound, just to make sure there's nothing else there, but this can be a normal variant. All right. Testicular tumors. Um, oh, the sound doesn't work. That makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my tumor. Do you know for today? No, it's from Family Guy. <laughs> oh, my tumor. Um, Ninety-five percent of testicular tumors are germ cell. Seminomas <laughs> account for fifty percent of those. 95% of cases, 10% are going to present with acute scrotal pain, usually due to hemorrhage into the tumor with necrosis, um, and then can pre can mimic torsion or epididymo orchitis. Um, so basically, they're going to present as sort of hypoechoic areas, either focal or diffuse in, in an enlarged testy. Um, an area of heterogeneous echogenicity suggestive of intra- tumor hemorrhage and necrosis. So if you're seeing, um, I don't think this one is the 
this is just a tumor, it doesn't really show you the necrosis. But if you're seeing areas where it's kind of mixed densities in there, then it would be suggestive of, of necrosis and hemorrhage. Calcifications can be found, cysts can be found. Color Doppler is usually unreliable um, because the hypervascularity that you'll see can also be seen in like orchitis. So can't really use that one. So if you ever find anything funky within a testicle, again, just send it for an official. That's it. Short and sweet.